This month alone, there have been several reports involving vehicular accidents, the most high profile being the Tanjung Paga crash, which killed the five people in the car. Just yesterday, there was a 10-vehicle pileup along the ECP that left at least three people with injuries. Well, these incidents have cast the spotlight again on issues brewing for some time, like road safety, driver behaviour and insurance claims even. So let's take the conversation forward with our panel of experts. Joining us in the studio is the Straits Times' senior transport correspondent, Christopher Tan, lawyer Emery Gill from Emery Gill LLC, and advanced driving instructor and veteran race car driver Ringo Chong. Hello gentlemen, uh, let's first talk about road user habits for the driver and passenger. Now Chris, generally speaking, do you find that those on the road uh, adhering to traffic rules like um, you know, driving within the speed limit, mm -hmm. not trying to beat the red light, belting up and so on? Okay, uh, traffic police statistics tells us that you know, running the red light and speeding are two of the offences they you know, crack down on. But from personal observation on the road, and I spend quite a bit of time on the road because I test drive cars for SC motoring, the poorer kind of behaviours I see come from, sad to say, taxi drivers and private hire cars and goods and delivery uh, people uh, because they are distracted by the mobile because they have to, you know, take on rides, they have to tap. So maybe the kind of technology that we um, go towards, or want to go towards, is something that doesn't reward the fastest finger. And the other uh, poorer kind of beha behaviour that I see come from younger drivers in uh, souped-up cars, unfortunately. Um, but I would say the first category make up more cases, more instances, but the second one, we have to bear in mind, even though they form the minority of cases, the accidents they tend to get into would tend to arise, tend to cause, uh, have a larger consequence, injuries and death. Mm -hmm. So we have to bear that in mind. You know, driving school teaches a driver to practice defensive driving, but is it stressed enough, you think? Well, I think uh, generally because the cars have grown uh, more comfortable, more quiet and much faster, uh, I think we need to raise the standard in the driving school because when you drive in the driving school, you drive a car that's less than 100 horsepower or 100 horsepower. And then when you're out there, you buy a car that's much quicker. And in school, you are taught to drive very slowly and there are many defensive uh, driving techniques that are not being taught you know, like break and avoid uh, during an emergency, what you should do, um, a lot of things like skip control. I think these are chapters that you need to put in to raise the standard because the cars are getting quicker. I mean, what have changed between uh, our human beings? We have nothing has changed over the past 30 years, but the cars have doubled in power. Now, the other issue with uh, accidents is claiming insurance. Emmerich, what are the top factors that insurers look at when in assessing damages and evaluating compensation? Well, uh, very generally speaking, the first thing that the insurance company will do is to assess the conditions, the terms and conditions of the policy. So that's the first thing and to ascertain whether or not the driver acted within those terms and conditions or whether or not the driver breached those terms and conditions. The second top factor that the insurer always goes into, and they go into this very quickly, uh, especially if there's objective evidence such as in-camera footage or accident reconstruction reports will be the issue of liability meaning is the driver fully responsible for the accident or is the driver partly responsible for the accident? And like I said, uh, this comes in a uh, form of objective evidence. It could even be in-car cameras from other vehicles, uh, cameras on the road, witnesses, etc., etc. So once the insurance company ascertains that the driver has not breached its policy, uh, terms and conditions and ascertain liability. The final factor that the insurer will look at will be that of quantum, meaning 
how much is to be paid out in terms of uh, pain and suffering, loss of earning capacity, loss of future earning, medical expenses, and unfortunately, in the case of um, fatal accidents, uh, bereavement, funeral expenses, etc. So these are the three tiers. It would be policy conditions, liability issues, and assessment of quantum. What could chip away at the damages parties are able to seek? Well, that would largely depend on various scenarios. Um, like I said earlier, the first thing could be a breach of the policy conditions. And sadly, it could be issues like speeding, drink, driving, um, illegal modifications to the concerned vehicle, something as simple as uh, not putting up, um, not wearing a seatbelt, uh, using a handphone while driving and things like that. So that would significantly reduce the uh, claims because the insurance will look at all these factors. Right. Uh, General, the next question uh, is open to the floor. Now, do you think being unable to claim the full insurance payout for whatever reason uh, inhibits people's urge to break traffic rules? Now, anybody would like to take this question? Um, if I may, well, people being people, um, I don't think it's going to have a material effect of them if they know that they will not succeed in a claim and that is why they have to drive uh, obedient, obediently. I do not think that repudiation of the insurer will really affect um, driving habits. However, in some cases, there is something called the Motor Insurer Bureau of Singapore that assesses the liability and the compensation issues. And even if a particular insurance company decides not to pay out, in certain cir circumstances, the Motor Insurers Bureau of Singapore, the MIB, does assist or compensate people who are injured in an accident, which is either caused by an uninsured motorist, for example, or due to speeding or some other form of negligence. I think if I may add to that, the fear of not being able to claim your full compensation is mm -hmm. unlikely to deter people, as Americ said. I mean, even the prospect of injury and death, right, that doesn't deter bad behaviour. We still see people speeding, changing lanes without signalling, without giving due cause to other people, using their phones, yeah. driving under the influence. All these things can lead to injuries and death and accidents and the prospect of losing a driving license. Even these things don't deter bad behaviour. So what are the things that we can do or put in place to, de to kind of change human behaviour? I think that is a question we have to ask ourselves as a community. Yeah, so that leads us to what we were about to ask you, Christopher. So if, like you said, um, insurance claims or personal res the weight of personal responsibility aren't enough, then do, do we need concrete measures? For example, we understand you support the introduction of tiered licensing for car drivers, like what we already have for motorcyclists. So how would th this model work for cars? Right. I mean, the whole principle of tiered licensing is to kind of put an experience level to the type of car they can drive or the kind of bike they can ride. And it applies to a lot of other vehicles. Uh, seagoing, vehicle, seagoing vessels uh, also have a tiered licensing. F uh, pilots' licenses are also tiered. So for cars, as Ringo pointed out earlier, cars have become a lot more powerful in the last 20, 30 years, right? And not only that, the economic factor, Singapore has become so affluent that young people uh, who have just started out working are able to buy a car which is a lot more powerful. Uh, in the past, you had to work 20, 30 years to get such a car. Also, manufacturers have come out with a lot more of such cars and priced them quite accessibly. The non-sports cars, the cars which are not Ferraris, not Porsches, they have come out with models which are equally more powerful, equally as powerful, sorry, uh, as these traditional uh, sports cars. Mm. So in the hands of an uh, inexperienced driver, they are, what well, they can be challenging, mm. right? 
So I think a tiered licensing approach has its merits. I never thought that this would be something um, I would consider, but after the episode in Tanjung Baga, I've received a lot of emails and more than half of them suggested that we should have a tiered licensing regime. And after thinking about it, I think it's something that is worth considering. Uh, Ringo, would you like to add to that? No, I think I think I agree uh, very much uh, with uh, to Chris on this because uh, we were actually discussing something uh, very similar like that uh, a while ago. I think because the cars are getting much quicker, you need to have certain understanding. Many car manufacturers actually have their own driving program, like BMW, like Porsche, like Ferrari. They have their own driving program uh, to educate their drivers that buy the cars, but. These are all uh, have to be paid for or you have to join them. But I think for people getting licenses, you should uh, encourage, we, we, we should actually raise the level of training because the cars are really getting much quicker. I mean, the days when I got my driving license, I was so happy to have a car that would do zero to 100 in 11 seconds or 12 seconds. Today, you can buy a car that would do zero to 100 in five seconds, a family car. Mm. You know, it's much quicker, it's 50 percent, 100% quicker, and then uh, it takes a different set of skill to educate them, uh, to let them learn. I yeah. think, like you said, after the incident in the Tanjong Paga case, uh, I think very important is education and experience for these people. Right. And Ringo, on that, you know, we are talking about the mm -hmm. Tanjong Paga crash. Uh, does this uh, particular incident, you know, underscore uh, then the importance of following traffic rules? Because we've talked about implementing concrete measures like um, the uh, tiered yeah, licensing. Okay. Right. We talked about uh, mm. exacting uh, punishments, like what Emmerich has mentioned. So again, you know, Ringo, recent accidents that we've talked about, particularly the Tanjung Paga crash, underscore the importance of following traffic rules, uh, especially ultimately, you know, with um, road behavior, road users' behavior. Yeah, I, I mean, really sorry for them. You know, uh, it's a very sad case. We lost five very young lives. Um, it's all down to application. And lastly, I think very important is uh, I've been racing uh, professionally for 35 years and uh, we have never had a proper racing track or an area. Maybe with a place that we can do drag racing, drag, you know, for people to try their cars like Malaysia, so that the young people have a chance to actually uh, uh, a place. It's like being able to buy a rifle or gun, but then you have nowhere to shoot. You don't have a rifle range or you don't have anything. So you need somewhere to experience, to practice, to do it safely and uh, to learn. Mm, I think I this is very important. Maybe hopefully one day somebody will build something here in Singapore so that uh, the young people get a chance to really want to try and uh, uh, experience and drive their cars. Right. Well, Christopher, I saw you nodding to what Ringo uh, just said. Do you have anything else, uh, any final words before we wrap up this discussion? Yeah. I, I was going to ask Ringo, and this is my suspicion, and uh, mm. through my years of, dr of driving various cars, that rear-wheel drive cars uh, tend to be more challenging when things start to go wrong. Uh, whereas front-wheel drive cars are yeah. easier to, uh, as maybe, you know, to catch uh, something, you know, as something goes awry. Uh, Ringo, would you agree with me? Oh, well, um, for sure, driving, you know, enjoyment and pleasure. People like driving rear-wheel drive cars, uh, like most race cars are, because you have less drag. But then for safety, it's always four wheel drive now. Everybody's going towards that, uh, that, that arena because you have a pull and a push action. So it's much safer for all rounder in the wet weather condition and all. Uh, well, I think that should answer the question. Uh, front wheel drive car is easier to drive, but mm. then you also have issues with front wheel drive cars with, because of the weight distribution in the car. You usually have the front much heavier than the rear. So if you're going down slope and it's a sharp turn and you're lifting off, then the rear comes around. You get an oversteer situation. So all this, I think you need to have education. You need the young ones to try. Drive at 60 kilometers per hour, 
take a sharp corner in a wet condition, lift off and see what happens and how you should react, how you should create the problem and how you should react. This saves lives and this is very important.